So Tim, you're one of the most highly regarded executives in the aviation sector. What impact do you feel you've had on the aviation industry during your time at Emirates as president of Emirates? Well, I think um, it was probably, when I go back to the uh, early part of the new millennia, uh, when I took this role, I'd been part of a team that had uh, established a business model uh, in the late 80s and through the 90s, which uh, turned out to be one of the most disruptive business models given the landscape in which it was introduced. Uh, and what I, and I was part of the original team there that executed, designed that and, and built it. So when I became president, it was a question of really of scaling that business model. Uh, it had been so successful. Um, and I guess I have, since I've been in this role, continued to grow the business significantly and successfully but always remaining focused on that business model. So if anything, the effect that that had on the aviation industry during the course of the growth of Emirates was pretty profound. Uh, it wasn't one of the only disruptive business models. Of course, the other one was the advent of the low-cost operations that swept through the planet in the, at about the same time as we did. So I think we kind of revolutionized long-haul travel um, and brought real flesh to those business models. And hitherto, they hadn't been particularly successful. And, and that's what we did, basically. And uh, we continue to be, up until the pandemic, very successful. Yeah, I mean, it certainly has been profound. So during your tenureship then, which airline has or still does perhaps concern you most or do you most respect? Well, I, I have to say that you know, I, I don't want to seem arrogant about this, but we were so focused on getting our business model right and successful. Uh, and we, we realized as we were developing this that we were already, uh, as I used to say to my team, we would look back in the wake of the ship to see them far behind us. Uh, it wasn't a question of being concerned about a particular airline. In fact, we were, we were hugely flattered that so many airlines decided to emulate what we are doing. It was more about how we had to deal with um, some of the activities of these airlines when they worked together to try and slow us or stop us, particularly in the United States. So that caused a certain amount of concern. We had to deal with it, and I believe we did that quite successfully. Any one particular airline that I had a lot of respect for, I guess in the early years, when we were looking at uh, designing the business model I alluded to earlier, I was looking at the likes of KLM, Singapore Airlines, um, they were formidable in these international hub and spoke uh, operations. So I learned quite a lot from what they did. Uh, Singapore Airlines, of course, was, was only a couple of years before us. So we grew at about the same time at the same pace. But they were very successful in what they did. And we liked the way they executed the, uh, the uh, brand proposition in the markets that they were serving. So yeah, it was quite good. So one, a couple of those, but the rest I wasn't too concerned about. Mm. Okay, well, I mean, you've obviously postponed your retirement once, um, given the current situation, when it eventually does come. Do you think you'll find it tough to step back, given the, the situation that the, the industry and also the, the business is currently in? Is that going to be hard? Well, I, it, it presupposes that the business can't continue without me. Of course it can. Um, and of course I will keep an interest in it because, you know, this business is a hobby to me. I mean, one of these lucky people where I'm actually doing my hobby rather than actually doing a job that I don't like doing. So I will naturally be interested in what's going on in the aviation world. And I guess there will be at times when I, I come back into it, but not in an executive role, uh, where I can impart some advice as to what perhaps could go on, whether it be into the business itself or to governmental uh, entities that need a little bit of help in, in their own formulation of aviation policies. Those kind of things, as long as I'm live and kicking, I can mm. do, I think. Okay. So I'm not too, too, too uh, concerned about stepping out of the industry. Goodness me, you know, there are younger people who need the chance to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously next year we would assume would be quite a crucial point in Emirates' evolution. So regarding your successor then, what's your main piece of advice for your successor? Well, you know, it, it, again, the successor, if, if it's going to be somebody like me who thinks like me, I would say stay focused on the business model. Navigate your way through this. We're, no, we're, we're nowhere near through it, but we will get through it. And I see no reason why the successful model that we've executed in hugely difficult times shouldn't be as good in the future as it has been 
to that. And it's extremely important that Dubai, which uh, to a large extent relies on people coming into the city, has a very strong aviation sector and particularly has a very strong airline or two airlines now to, to do the job. So I would say to them, stay focused on, the, on that. Uh, uh, treat this as a, as a global disruption. We've had a few of those, but not quite as bad. We all get through it. And people will start traveling again. Just to bring it back to 2020 then, and I mean, we've already touched on the crisis at one point. What's been Emirates' darkest hour during the last 12 months? Well, I guess it's got to be the grounding of the passenger fleet for the best part of two months. Mm. Uh, you know, that's what we do. And, and if, you, if we can't operate, then it's hugely difficult. Uh, but, of course, we did start again very quickly in terms of getting the cargo operation going. Then we slipped passengers on as best we could, repatriation. Eventually, we, we've got to our 777 fleet working fairly hard now. But goodness me, if you if you... If you deprive any industry of its private primary source of income, whether it be automotive, banking, or whatever, it's always going to be dark. Mm. Uh, but we, you know, we have a pretty um, upbeat, can-do attitude. Uh, the, this, this is the worst we faced, but by it's not the only one we faced, mm. um, and that's why I know we got through the, the 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 ones in the past. We'll get through this. Is there anything that you would have done differently? How well do you feel the airline has dealt with the crisis? I don't think we could have done anything other than what we have done. So much was out of our control and today remains out of our control. Countries opening and closing borders, changing rules, regulations, trying to keep up with that and, and actually to have got 151 777s flying meaningfully has certainly uh, um, arrested the cash outflow that we were agonizing about six or seven months ago. Um, so no, I think the, the, the team, as I knew they would, stepped up and as soon as they saw the opportunity they grabbed it and got going again at a time when we were having to downsize the workforce which was hugely difficult for us we've never done that before uh, but nevertheless the the airline continued to operate and does well at the moment okay so how do you, do you see the future of the airline unfolding then in the wake of the pandemic in terms of uh, fleet network and workforce size for example well i i if this pandemic um, works its way through 2021. And I think that is all contingent upon the vaccine and its efficacy and also the, the success in the logistical element of distribution to the countries it needs to go to. Um, I can see uh, demand returning at pace. Mm. Uh, others will disagree with me and there has been a real move to suggest that the airline industry will never be the same again. I do not subscribe to that view at all. Um, I think that people will continue to travel in all the segments. Some segments may be weaker than others in the, in the short term, but eventually it'll all come back. What does that mean? There is absolutely no reason why our network should not be restored to its former glory with the fleet as it is. Uh, on top of that, uh, I see the opportunities that we have for the, f the expansion of the network that we had planned, of course it's been arrested, also kicking in in 22-23. Um, and that allows us to uh, reactivate the 380 fleet. Of course, we've got 100 plus on the ground at the moment, sooner rather than later. Okay, and with that return of the network, does that also suggest a return to profitability as well? Most definitely. It has to. We, we, we're not used to making losses at all. This is a this was disaster for us in the first half year, but of course, what could we do? You know, we've got 350, 400 million dollar aeroplanes sitting on the ground, 115 of those, and you have to make the, the, the payments and our debt providers and all the people involved in providing the funds that we borrowed to do all that are, are not um, particularly helpful when it comes, for, <laughs> comes to uh, moratoriums. Some do, but it's been quite difficult. So we've had to meet our obligations. Mm. Um, so as soon as we get those... Uh, uh, dealt with and we get the fleet flying and we can and get cash coming back into the business that it, the way it used to then we will become profitable uh, I would think fairly quickly uh, let's let's assume that fuel remains in around the 40 50 dollar mark um, I, I see no reason why we shouldn't get back to some kind of profitability fairly quickly Okay, and then, and then just, this is quite a broad question but in terms of the, the main changes you see as a result of the pandemic how do you view those? in the aviation sector? Well, you know, as I said earlier, I don't subscribe to the view that there's going to be a step change, a, a, uh, uh, a quantum change in the way people go about their business when it comes to flying, okay? 
Uh, the, the, the airline industry was carrying over 4 billion people a year. Uh, I think that'll go back to its former glory sooner than other people are thinking. I hope that's the case. So I think by 23, uh, we will see the restoration of the old levels and a recapture of the growth that had been going on to that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, that assumes, of course, that the pandemic is dealt with meaningfully by the, as I say, the promulgation, dissemination of the vaccine, and it is, and its efficacy remains as good as people are told it is going to be. Mm. So, why then should we not recapture what we were doing before? Why should there be fundamental changes to business models? It doesn't have mm. to be like that. Just to top it off, then, what's the one thing that you want to see happen? in the av aviation industry to improve it in the next couple of years? Well, I've, one of the, my, my, my concerns has always been the, uh, the need to disintermediarize the business. There are too many entities uh, that have grown with the business and they have become hugely profitable on the back of our business when our profitability, certainly in the airline industry, hasn't been particularly uh, stunning. Mm -hmm. And the more I see entities coming in, and I, can, I won't name them, but it is important that people who come after me focus on eliminating the need to rely on intermediaries who are always there to seemingly help you out. So you really need to concentrate, and that's something we've done in Emirates, uh, is focus on our own destiny, our own business model, control of everything that we do, uh, within the global markets is done by us and where we have to go to third parties where we don't have a choice we must do that but progressively we need to improve the profitability by eliminating third parties who dilute and uh, compromise that. Mm. So Tim it's been an absolute pleasure chatting thank you so much. You're welcome.